Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about Nebula. Specifically, we're going to discuss different types of Nebula out there in our galaxy and our universe. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So, as you may probably already know, Nebula are these absolutely beautiful formations that you see right here. Here's actually one of the most famous nebula in our galaxy, the Carina Nebula. It's basically these beautiful clouds that um, are sometimes visible if the night sky is dark enough. But a long time ago, nebula actually meant a lot of things. As a matter of fact, uh, scientists refer to galaxies as nebula. They also refer to various um, star formations and globular clusters. And so nebula meant a lot of things. But today it doesn't actually mean all of those things and only means um, very specific four things. And I'm going to mention these four things um, right now. We're going to start with the so-called um, classical nebula. Uh, and uh, specifically, the first type is, well, this right here, Carina Nebula. These um, actually uh, classify as H2 Nebula. And um, H2 is another name for what's known as diffuse nebula. It's basically a kind of a cloud-like formation that doesn't really have any borders, but on the inside may contain three different types of nebula by itself. And one of these uh, types is known as the Emission Nebula, which is uh, an example right here on the screen. This is called the Omega Nebula. Um, and this is in real life, although in Space Engine, it looks slightly different. This is kind of what um, the Omega Nebula appears as. Actually very, very beautiful and extremely mysterious. Now these emission nebula are called emission nebulas um, because of really one thing. They emit light um, due to various types of uh, stars uh, causing the actual gas to start radiating light. Uh, in other words, Imagine uh, a neon light. Um, so the way that neon light works is by um, energizing the gas inside the neon bulb and causing it to basically shine really brightly. And this is the effect that's caused uh, by the energy that's given to hydrogen atom that then releases a very specific um, frequency um, as it absorbs this energy. And usually for emission nebula, uh, the actual frequency, the actual color that they emit is red. And so many of them have this red-like appearance that you see on the screen right now. Um, now, uh, it doesn't always have to be red, but usually it is red because of hydrogen. Other molecules will produce different types of light, but because hydrogen is the most common molecule, it produces red light. Then we also have um, what's known as Reflection Nebula, and this is an example of such nebula. This is the uh, famous nebula known as uh, the Witch's Head, and it's actually almost always shown during Halloween. This is the actual picture of what Witch's Head looks like, because it kind of resembles a witch, I guess, if you look uh, really carefully. And uh, the Reflection Nebula are normally blue in color, and as you can see here, um, the actual nebula in terms of the actual uh, borders and all that, is still diffuse. There's no actual um, defined borders here. But at the same time, the color is different. And uh, the reason for this color is because reflection nebula, they don't actually necessarily emit light by absorbing it. They just reflect light uh, from stars that are nearby. And so whatever color is given to them is the color they reflect. And this is why they're called reflection nebula. Although normally, nebula actually contain both reflection and emission nebula. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of nebula are a mixture of two, and also even three. And this is actually the third type known as the dark nebula. And I think one of the most uh, famous examples of the dark nebula is this right here. This is the horse head nebula that's coming up. It's the dark patch you see on the screen. And the horse head is actually right here in the middle. And Horsehead Nebula is basically the example of this dark nebula. It's basically absorbent nebula. It absorbs the light that's behind it and doesn't emit anything, doesn't reflect anything. And as you can see, uh, this around it is the emission nebula. So in other words, this is actually a combination of both emission and dark. 
at the same time, there's actually some reflection going on as well, especially right there. And so um, this whole Orion system, Orion Nebula system, is essentially a typical diffuse nebula that combines all three. So these are the so-called classical examples, but we also have a few other examples. Like for example, there's also something called planetary nebula. And planetary nebula have nothing to do with planets, unfortunately. As a matter of fact, for the most part, planetary nebula are mis misnamed. It's a misnomer for these uh, particular um, events. This is basically the end of a star, similar to like Sun, for example. And what happens here as the star comes to an end, it actually releases a tremendous amount of um, energy and also a tremendous amount of material that creates this envelope around it. And this envelope starts to um, emit light as the star itself, that's still in the middle, uh, shines on it. And this cat's eye nebula that you see right here that um, is a little bit brighter than it is in real life is basically the prime example of these planetary nebula. Our sun will actually become one as well um, in about six to seven billion years from now. And many other stars similar to our sun will also undergo this particular event. So these nebula are very unique in that they actually form at the end of various stars. Similarly, there's actually another type of a nebula that happens right before this. And these nebula also unfortunately named very poorly because early scientists didn't really understand what's happening here. These are called protoplanetary nebula, but once again have nothing to do with planets. This actually happens um, when the star transitions from its stage of life right before it either goes supernova or basically ends up as a white dwarf. And um, these particular events will eventually possibly follow a very large supernova event, which will also create a nebula or uh, the planetary nebula that you just saw um, previously. And what's interesting about protoplanetary nebula, uh, although a lot of scientists call them preplanetary nebula because it's a slightly better term, um, is that they actually have this really cool uh, geometric shape. They almost always form this really interesting looking rectangle-like shape that you see on the screen right now. And there's actually a very, very large, very powerful star in the middle of this that's creating this very bright uh, cloud around it. So this is what we call a protoplanetary nebula. And the last type of a classical nebula I wanted to show you is essentially a supernova remnant. And this is a perfect example from Crab Nebula that's um, essentially created because uh, all of this gas that was released after a supernova is now being um, powered by a relatively strong neutron star in the middle of this nebula. And so the supernova are um, probably one of the more common and more well-known nebula types because supernova are actually relatively known phenomena today. Um, but nevertheless, uh, what most people don't realize is that uh, these nebula are actually also very varied and will almost never look the same. So, so this is Crab Nebula, a really good example of uh, the one of the closest and also one of the more well-known nebula to us. Uh, but there are obviously other examples, such as this right here, uh, the supernova known as SN1006, because it most likely happened in the year 1006 and was actually an extremely, extremely bright event that was registered by the Chinese astronomers. I'm actually going to talk about this event separately because it does deserve its own video. But anyway, so this is kind of the main types of the nebula we currently have um, in our vocabulary. And for the most part, this really covers most of these really cool looking, unusual and beautiful clouds. So you have the emission nebula, you have the reflection nebula, the dark nebula, the planetary nebula, the uh, protoplanetary nebula, and lastly, the supernova nebula. All in all, this kind of covers uh, most of them, but there's obviously always an example that kind of doesn't really fit these particular structures. We're going to talk more about uh, Nebula in the future as well. Um, and if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space through video games and simulations. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Space out and as always, bye bye.